Welcome to TradeTheMBI.com. This is John's reports for the 26th. Well, the juggernaut continued. Now, we ended up with, uh, you know, I've had a couple of days of difficulties getting my data up, but finally got it resolved to a certain degree, at least. And uh, we started off this week with that poke of the MBI white, which led to some weakness below the 23%, but we also noted that Magento was not below yellow, and when that happens, you've got to look for turnaround moves. We also noticed that the green cyan mixture right here had the uh, green leading, which is usually pretty bullish coming off that dip of the orange. So everything from that buy dip of the orange off of a P2 developed, it just was a little bit, uh, well, they don't make it easy. They I mean, back and forth a little bit and the dip below the 23%. Uh, but once back above the 23%, it's been nothing but uh, long since then the magenta cleared it. Uh, but what you're starting to see now is midterm buyers in the form of uh, that green power fading as shorts increase. Still got rising DOC red, so that's long-term buyers still poking in here now that we've got some momentum going. And steel failing, uh, which is also uh, short-term buyers uh, just closing off. We're having a pretty decent run after all. Um, Key will be here near the 38%, uh, whether we can hold that and push to the 50 or whether it starts to consolidate right here and lose some steam. Um, currently off just a little bit right now, nothing dramatic. Uh, from a NASDAQ standpoint, uh, pretty identical. It's interesting to see the white MBI already taking over uh, Magenta and Magenta pivoting here at the 33, um, which is a fairly weak sign. At the same time, you're getting not quite a DOC spread, but you're getting the uh, cyan uh, lead over the green, and that's not exactly bullish from that context. But you're still in the momentum phase of you know the shakeout rising. Still not positive though, which is something to bear in mind. A turnaround there would be definitely ugly, and I would expect to move back to the zero percent if that uh, takes place. The euro continues its tear as central banks get together and decide how they're going to. Uh, help things along. Um, there's been some benefit, though, uh, in Europe uh, with the warmer temperatures. Uh, it's been exceedingly warm uh, for October, and that will spare them a lot of uh, gas resources in that for now. And so that makes uh, quite a positive move. So the euro getting back to parity with the dollar uh, for the first time uh, in a week or so. And here we have gold. Just starting to make a comeback, uh, you know, again, it's going to be uh, one of those realizations where they recognize that uh, quantitative easing will start back up again and gold will shoot up again. So this is just a net effect of uh, the drain that the market has seen. And when some of that liquidity gets pulled, it will uh, sell some of those other paper assets in order to move things around. Um, Still tough now when we realize the bifurcation in the gold market, and not really getting true price discovery when it comes to that setup, but we can trade what is, and that's going to continue to reveal itself because, again, because it is mostly paper and that the algorithms still apply. Oil holding right underneath that 50% range, still within my configurations on it, just has a uh, no real momentum at this particular stage. And I think that's relative to what they're going to see from consumption and whether or not uh, uh, we're looking at any kind of uh, deepening of recessionary notes. Uh, clearly, DLT. So this goes back to that uh, 150 plus area where we expected the short to take place. It did, brought us all the way back down to just over the 100s, expected it to break that down into the 93 range. Well, now we're in at 91. So that gives you a clear idea of what the bond market thinks. Treasury yields going to continue to rise. Um, no end in sight on that. And the implications for the market on that one are significant because uh, they may be early, but they're not going to be wrong. And that's going to have to uh, equate itself out. And of course, that depends on whether or not the economy can hold out and absorb uh, those changes. And if it can, Everything will be status quo, so to speak. Uh, but 
as we're starting to see some layoffs and things like that, if those things begin to accelerate in a more rapid pace, then uh, and that inflation continues to bite at people's uh, ability to purchase things, then things are going to change. Uh, and I've been pointing out, making the case over these last uh, well month, uh, the power in Bitcoin had been building uh, from a strength standpoint, and the potential for it to make a robust move. Uh, it's definitely there, particularly as uh, the concern over hyperspending uh, from governments and the fact that it's shown uh, quite normalized stability now over uh, a much longer period uh, lends itself to the possibility of a nice breakout move. And we've got everything from the orange dip, rising green, still have some decent short interest applying in there, but uh, magenta from an MBI has been clean over and we're positive shakeout, so all those are pointing good. It does need to exceed the 50%. My feeling is, is whenever you get positive shakeout, you need to exceed past your 50%. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have uh, a return back to your zero. That's just the way it tends to work. And there we have 50K. So runs have been completely clean. What we had, though, was a series of positive extremes that I mentioned on the breakout. And we can see that we're just dipped a little bit above uh, that first premium low. Certainly the secondary one was uh, filled right there. But we've got to go all the way to, what is it, 38 to 15 range. I think 47 now. Uh, it was a pretty decent dip to it. The low uh, went to 24. So it's pretty good. And... That's the sad 5K chart. Doesn't quite have its paint bar back, but uh, what I did was I tried to save the programs and that without the data set up within them and uh, see if that would allow them to come back. So I'll post this chart though on our Skype chat and uh, go through the details there. But uh, overall it was a pretty clean day and you can see that uh, in post-market though, filling back a lot of uh, what was some just Intraday excitement, bounce. We had marked some previous ones, but a lot of them beginning from right about uh, this 3823 had a lot of positive extremes, as you can see, all right through here. And then subsequently going the middle ones uh, filled up, but getting back to that uh, 23 marker, finalized it, and literally like almost right to the tick, just fractionally above it. So that's the long and the short of it for now, and exciting to finally have everything back up and running. Uh, look for me on the Skype chat, and trade well. We'll talk again later.